Well, thank you for that kind introduction, and I appreciate uh, the Kansas City Public Library inviting me to speak tonight. Hopefully this talk will not be nasty, brutish, and short. Um, it's always great to be back here in the area. My family had, uh, has lived here twice, up in Fort Leavenworth. Uh, I left a daughter here who's here tonight, Kyle, who is a sophomore at the University of Kansas, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. And we have enjoyed many a memorable and, in, and enjoyable day here in the city at the plaza and at Arrowhead Stadium. Okay, forget about Iraq. Can we talk about the Chiefs? <laughs> uh, that's that. per perhaps a, that talk would be nasty, brutish, and short. <laughs> okay, but tonight I will talk about my second book and most recent work, Baghdad at Sunrise, A Brigade Commander's War in Iraq. I... I wrote this book, uh, I really went to Iraq not intending to write a book. What I wanted to do, I knew this would be a defining experience in my life. It was the first time in 20 plus years in the military that I had been in, in a combat zone. I had been deployed before but never uh, seen action. And I wanted to leave behind an enduring memoir for my family. And so I brought a journal with me and I faithfully wrote in it, every night, no matter how tired I was, and usually that was at two in the morning after the days and early evening activities were done. And some passages are longer than others, depending on exactly how tired I was, but it gave me really the skeletal framework of what I did over that year and the key events in my brigade combat team's area. I, let it, I, I got back from Iraq in... July of 2004, and I just let the journal uh, lapse for about a year. I just pushed it off to the side. I had a brigade to regenerate and uh, a family to get reacquainted with. But then about uh, after that year had passed, I decided, well, let me turn this uh, into a manuscript. It's pretty rough. My grandkids, uh, when they're born, won't really understand reading day-to-day -day entries exactly what the entire experience was all about. So I started to turn it into a personal manuscript, not intending to publish it. But the further I got into it, the more I decided that there were enduring lessons in our experience that needed to be shared with a wider audience. Uh, the military could learn lessons from our experience, and the American people as a whole could learn lessons from our experience. So I then turned uh, what was a combat journal into Baghdad at Sunrise. And what I wanted to do was to go beyond my, my war in Iraq or my brigade's war in Iraq and use our experiences as a lens to look at the wider operational and strategic issues at play in the war. Um, I think by doing this, the, uh, the book does fill the broader need of explaining uh, more of what went on and giving context and character characterization to that first and crucial year in Iraq. It also fills a really critical hole in the historiography of the war. Uh, to date, what we've seen are quite a few memoirs by relatively junior officers and soldiers, non-commissioned officers, and some of these books are quite good. Uh, but it's basically a similar story. There I was on the street. It was hot. The, it was dusty. The people were unfriendly, and some of them were friendly. And, you know, it was kind of the, the gritty nature of counterinsurgency warfare, but not a lot of perspective on what happened at higher levels or how we got to where we were. And on the other hand, then you have the books by the very senior people, Jerry Bremer's My War in Iraq, Douglas Feith, uh, Ricardo Sanchez, and they tend to be of the nature of, it wasn't my fault, it was his fault. And again, uh, we're missing something. And I think what we're missing is that critical echelon in this war, which was at the brigade level and perhaps battalion level and, and division level, but I think the brigade of these levels, the brigade level was a, a really critical uh, chink in the uh, or element in the in the war. In, in many uh, respects, Iraq was a brigade commander's war. It was the brigade was the first uh, um, level at which commanders had most of the assets needed to prosecute counterinsurgency op operations such as civil affairs, psychological operations, engineers, counterintelligence, and so forth. Brigade commanders owned ground. Uh, brigade, uh, Iraq was divided up into areas of responsibility, and the brigade commanders, in effect, were the government uh, in that first year of critical pieces of Iraq. 
the Ready First Combat Team, um, the combat team of which I was commander for, based on the 1st Brigade, 1st Armored Division, owned Central Baghdad and Northeast Baghdad. And finally, uh, we provided a necessary link between the civil authorities, uh, the Coalition Provisional Authority, and the military command. And in that uh, line, we had authority to spend money on reconstruction from the commander's emergency response program. So I think for future historians, unless you look at brigade level, you're going to miss key uh, elements of what's going on in Iraq. Uh, beyond that, I decided not to footnote Baghdad at sunrise extensively. It is based on my journal. It would get kind of repetitive to say, uh, see my journal page, you know, two, page three, page four. Uh, I did ha have uh, extensive email archives that I kept. Uh, I fleshed that out with uh, news reports. I did have embedded uh, news journalists with the brigade and other sources that I could uh, publish and unpublish that I could get, get a hold of. So the, the book is thoroughly grounded in the sources and not just interviews, which I think is uh, perhaps... Uh, a failing of a lot of the recent literature on the war. They're, they're heavily based on oral history, and oral history is good, but you have to use it carefully. Uh, so the histories that are coming out of the surge, for instance, have to be used with caution until historians can get access to the documentary evidence and then base that, uh, link, marry it up with the, the oral histories and the interviews that uh, have been done. Um, but what I wanted to do, and the reason I didn't footnote it too extensively, is I wanted to make it readable for the general audience so that the American people would, would perhaps pick it up and learn more about why this war uh, went down the way it went down. Uh, I think, um, you know, it's a story not just worth telling, but hopefully a story well told. And my judge in that, in that sense is my daughter Kyle, who read it and said, hey, Dad, you should be on The Daily Show. <laughs> I shall have to settle for C-SPAN, but <laughs> that's, highest praise, that's high praise from the newest, greatest generation. Um, our expectation going into Iraq was that this would be a short, sharp, quick war. And my expectation going there after a year at the Army War College was it would be something like Kosovo on steroids, a, a very intensive peacekeeping operation. It quickly became apparent, however, that in toppling Saddam Hussein and his Ba'athist hierarchy that had ruled Iraq for three decades, that we had unleashed forces that were not well understood at the time. Uh, it was a struggle for the future of the Iraqi people uh, and a, a struggle to contain extremist vi violence that would take uh, blood, treasure, and time to bring under control. A new day had dawned in Iraq, a new sunrise in Baghdad, if you will, uh, but whether that day re would be stormy or cloudy remained to be seen, and in fact, as we all know now, the new sunrise spawned a hurricane. The fundamental error of the Bush administration in going into this war was in fighting the war they wanted to fight and not recognizing the, the war that they had unleashed. Uh, the prominent 19th century ph war philosopher, philosopher Karl von Clausewitz uh, says, the first, the supreme, the most far-reaching act and of judgment that the statesman and commander have to make is to establish the kind of war on which they are embarking, neither mistaking it for nor turning it into something that is alien to its nature. Now, this administration went into Iraq ostensibly for national security reasons, the proverbial mushroom clouds over American cities, and we had to get rid of Saddam Hussein's non-existent weapons of mass destruction. But their assumption was that this would be a war of liberation, that the Iraqi people would welcome us as liberators, that we could turn Iraq back over to its citizens in relatively rapid fashion, and we could e exit. These assumptions should have been re-examined by the summer of 2003, at the very latest. The evidence for the emergence of the insurgency was clear and should have led to a, a comprehensive reevaluation of the war effort from political policy to strategy and from oper the operational concept being employed to tactics, techniques, and procedures being used on the ground. 